hello everyone and a very welcome back to the channel um thank you for all the nice feedback in the last few videos if it's your first time visiting the channel give a look back there with some great content uh i'm sure you'll enjoy it if you're into machinery and you're into uh contracting and all that kind of stuff that's what we do we do our, a lot of our own um maintenance and that kind of stuff maybe big stuff we don't touch too much but uh we do the vast majority of it ourselves um so here today we're putting a pickup hitch on the CVX175. It had its European hitch on it all along, but it's time for that to go now. Uh, that's actually going back to Europe, funnily enough. And um, I'm putting on the, the UK Ireland pickup hitch, as we call it. Um, it's off of a Deitz, a Deitz 6190, that probably was exported uh, some time ago, and that hitch uh, bolts straight onto it and the hitch is in very very good condition so i um shot some bolts um the bolts that came with it funnily funny thing were the wrong bolts i actually have two pickup hitches here and i was able to grab some of the bolts out of the other one but i need to get some more uh tomorrow then i will lift that up underneath it slide the pin through it and the job will be done so that's that um we're doing that i'm also changing the transmission oil in it uh while i'm here now i may as well do that much uh something we do every thousand hours now is change the transmission oil and this one is due its service so i'll just show you one of the filters here this is our suction filter this is our old suction filter and this is the housing that sits into um anyone that ever asks me do you know if they have funny transmission codes i always say did you service the tractor lately because uh, you can get very very strange things happening if you don't seat this filter in properly so it's vitally important that this filter is put in properly it sits in there underneath the tractor we'll probably give a climb in and give a look but um thankfully this filter is absolutely spotless no um no contamination in the oil whatsoever no bits of steel or anything which is a good sign but it's always uh always a concern when you go change from filters you don't know what you're going to be met with so all is good here anyway um ready to stick her back together and put fresh oil into her so i have my new filter here and i always always use genuine ones um i wouldn't be uh i wouldn't be loyal to getting the genuine stuff the whole time but uh, i just feel it's important to put the genuine stuff into these ones so i'm going to stick this filter back in there's also a pressure filter that we need to change and that's underneath it too so we'll get stuck into that and we'll show you the going on. Okay, so we have our uh, suction filter back on here now. And it's uh, all bolted up. Everything went back together sweetly. Here is our pressure filter. And you see the nut here with an aluminium nut on the end of it. And that's it's a bit damaged, but uh, I've seen them an awful lot worse. Um, funnily enough, now that's probably the best one I've seen in a long, long time for how undamaged that is. So that canister must have been changed, you'd imagine. Um, so we'll whip that canister off, we'll change our uh, pressure filter and then we're all good just to start adding the oil back into it. And there you can see our suction, or sorry, our pressure filter is back on. That's our new pressure filter. And all that's left to do now is put on the hosing, fill her up of oil and uh, away we go. Um, small bit more I can show you inside here I suppose. That's our hydraulic pump just above it there. That the light is shining on, that the, the steel pipe is coming in at an angle and going down on to that's driven straight through our transmission. There's a drive coming straight out there, driving our hydraulic pump. This is uh this big pipe here in front of me is going up to our hydraulic tank, and there's a hydraulic filter straight in front of us, and also there's a filter inside in the bottom of the hydraulic tank. And they need to be done as well, but uh, they don't need to be done right now, this minute. So once I've this done, I'll fill her back up with oil. I'm going to give a quick look around the tractor, just give it a, a physical inspection, uh, grease it, check her error codes, and uh, see how we go in. It needs to be washed. I should have washed it before I went doing this, but um, I'll give her a wash there tomorrow. Our low loader is pulled out. Um, it's painted, but uh, just waiting for steel because our steel merchant wasn't open yesterday when I went in to get some steel, so I'll finalise that job and finish her off whenever we get the steel. But uh, we really need to get ready for slurry spreading season now, which is just around the corner, so I need to get out my trail and shoe. But uh, once I have the hitch on this, at least it's another tractor that can go spreading, so it'll keep us, uh, keep us out of trouble, and there'll be plenty of them there. So I'll wrap this job up, get it finished, and uh, we'll see where we're going. 
Okay, so as you can see, our pickup hitch is more or less fitted. It's just um, the Dromon has different size uh, where your drop arms go on. There's a different size here, so I have to get pins made. As you can see, I have that one taken out and I have it taken to an engineering shop. But uh, other than that, the hitch is fully fitted. Um, I also took the Alec hitch studs, or there was only ordinary bolts in that, in our PTO, um, PTO shaft, and I put Allen key studs in there. So I was able to get a bit more of a squeeze on them than you would with the with the bolts because they're twelve point nines and you'd be just you have a bit more uh, confidence squeezing the last out of them. So our hydraulic slide out in the hitch, I would probably plumb into the tractor's own um, services where they come out here. That it'll just be on the spool valve constantly. Um, it won't be in here. I'd be getting rid of the fittings of one. We'd be down to three spool valves thing because one of them is already done to the front linkage. So I'd basically be doing the same thing there for her hitch. Um, I also must get a cable for it, which I will order tomorrow. Um, what I'm doing here now is I'm changing fuel hoses. So you can see I have an old one here now. I'll show you where they're coming off of. Or, uh, here's one of them now. That's one I've already changed. And it's going in there underneath the diesel tank. Bit awkward to get at, but not the worst thing in the world. Uh, one of these was fairly perished, so I'm going to change the two of them. And that'll be that uh, sorted in her. Uh, then we're on to our diesel filters, our fuel filters, our front axle oil, and our hydraulic filters. And give a quick run through or check all our codes. I haven't done that yet, but uh, that must be done. And that will be her fully, fully serviced, ready to go, uh, ready to put her at the slurry spreading. So, yeah, I'll stick at it there now. I'll fit these and uh, I'll call it a night. Another job that needs to be done also is the cab needs to be cleaned out. But anyway, I'll show you how to check your fault cards now. In tier threes, in tier ones and tier twos, it's different. But anyway, you turn on your key, you press and hold your ID button for 10 seconds and it will bring up a list of them that we're gonna see here now in a second. Once our 10 seconds are up, you have to keep it pressed for 10 seconds. Right, here we go. Here's a list of our controllers. We have our armrest unit, our ECU, our EDC is to do with our lift, I think. Our EEM is, um, our EEM is the engine, engine management. Uh, ICU, I can't remember what ICU is. SGR is transmission, FMGR is basically, it's a controller inside here that controls a lot of stuff in the cab. Um, actually, I don't think it's in there in the tier trees, I think it could be under the floor. Anyway, we'll go down and check our codes. I'd never bother checking the ARU unless we get an ARU error. Uh, I checked the ECU, the EEM and uh, SGR. So we'll press our down arrows. That'll bring our lighting down and press enter which is your a and b buttons b is your enter and we have no we're holding no um no eccu faults so we'll check our eem now and we're holding no eem faults check our sgr and we're holding no transmission faults fmgr is the last one we'll check and we're holding no faults there either. So that's all good. We've no errors on the tractor. Um, <clears throat> all I'll do now is I'll drop my transmission oil, or sorry, my um, hydraulic oil, and we'll be able to check that. Right, so here we have our tank filter. It's, uh, it's directly at the front of our hydraulic tank in the tractor. Basically, all it does is when you fill up with oil, it'll catch any debris, um, that'll be in your jug or will fall in in the meantime. Now I can see by the bolts that this filter has never been taken off. So I'm expecting it to be a bit dirty, but um, anyway, we'll whip it off there now and we'll uh, we'll clean it out. I think I have one there, but they can be cleaned anyway. A bit difficult to clean them, but they can be cleaned, but we'll show you the filter when it's down. Right, so I have our tank filter out now, and as you can see, it is fairly clogged with stuff. I thought I had one there, but I, I can't. I can't lay my hands on it. Uh, it might have been used in a, in another tractor. I'm not sure, but um, I will clean this one out now. What I'll do is I'll fill it with the diesel and start blowing air through it, and we'll be able to clean all that stuff out of it. So 
we'll get there but uh, it definitely definitely needed to be changed right so if the filter uh, washed out now i was washing it in diesel i don't recommend anyone to do that um for their own help because when you start blowing air through diesel it atomizes it and that's very very bad for your lungs so if you are going washing something like that use a mask please uh so this is our waste oil barrel i'm just throwing it into this here now and this this little canister was uh, clean before we started so we'll see how much uh, rubbish uh, came out of it now bear in mind a good bit of it will be going with the diesel but we'll see what's left in the bottom of the canister when we're finished and i'd expect it's going to be quite a lot which it is yeah that is a lot a lot of rubbish uh, that was caught in that filter and as you can see it's all dirt and paint and stuff like that so that's that just goes down into your hydraulic tank you can see lots of bits of grass lots of bit of paint um and stuff like that inside there so i will wash it out again um but i have most of it there now now i would recommend to anyone as well changing the filter opposed to doing this but i don't have a filter and i know the dealer isn't going to have it in stock because it's very very rare people actually go near these filters a lot of people don't even know they're there so anyway i'll uh, i'll go cleaning out this and uh, we'll stick it back up and that'll be another job done right so that's her sorted that's everything gone through on the tractor all our front axle oil has changed in it our tire pressures are checked everything is greased all our oil has changed everywhere uh, even in our two um two diff housings in the rear and everything is working as it should we're uh, we're flying it away now so that's this tractor done and um, we're going to pull the low loader in there now and get that finished and that'll be tonight's project but uh this is the end of this video uh thank you very much anyone who's watched and uh hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or you have any feedback please let me know and we'll talk to you later